2016 was a huge election year in the United States. While my parents were deciding who to vote for, I decided to do some research on the election process itself. The entire election process seems a bit complicated, and I found that most people I spoke with felt the same. Here is my attempt to simplify the confusion with some stick figures and memes. The steps for the presidential election in the United States go something like this. First, the primaries and caucuses, then the party convention, then in November the election itself, and finally the electoral college. First, each state holds a primary or caucus, which occurs around 6 to 9 months before the actual election. The primary or caucus date differs from state to state and can even vary from party to party. Going into the details of primaries and caucuses requires a whole nother video, so we'll talk about them at a later time. Basically, the primaries and caucuses are the initial voting processes where the presidential candidate for each party is selected. Then there's the convention where the formal announcement is made as to who is the party's presidential nominee. Then, come November, we vote in the presidential election. In December, the Electoral College meets and declares the next president of the United States of America. Now, what in the world is the Electoral College? Unlike what I thought when I was younger, the Electoral College is not actually a college. It is actually a set of electors who are selected to elect a candidate to a particular office. In the United States, the Electoral College is composed of 538 electors. Now, who in the world are the electors? It can be anybody. Disclaimer, must be a US citizen over the age of 18. Certain restrictions apply. See US Constitution for more details. Basically, as long as you are not a senator or representative, nor a person holding an office of trust or profit under the United States, nor a person who engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the United States, you can be an elector. In practice, electors are usually present or former elected officials. Now that we've got the basics under our belts, let's get a little more complex. The Electoral College has a certain number of electors for each state. The number of electors each state gets is equal to the number of people in the House of Representatives from that state plus the two senators from that state. That gives us a grand total of 538 electors. Each state's party will create a slate or set of electors. Generally, whichever candidate wins in your state gets all the electors for that state. Generally. What I mean by that is, 48 states and DC will award all of their electors on a winner-take-all basis, which means whoever gets the most votes in that state gets all the electors for that state, while Maine and Nebraska have a more, well, complex process. Basically, the statewide winner gets two electors to represent the Senate, while the winner of each congressional district gets an elector for each district one to represent the House of Representatives. Hey, don't blame me, I didn't make these rules. Now, let's look at, say, North Carolina, which has 15 electors. The state Republican, Democratic, and Libertarian parties will have 15 electors each. When you vote in November, you vote for the candidate of your choice. Let's say that the Republican candidate wins in North Carolina. Then, in December, the 15 Republican electors will vote for the Republican candidate, giving the Republican candidate 15 electors in the college. Anyways, whichever candidate reaches the magic number of 270 electors is declared President of the United States of America. Got it? Good. Of course, there is the chance of a tie 269 to 269, or that neither candidate gets a majority in the college. If this happens, the president is chosen by the House, and the vice president is selected by the Senate. And now for a look at the 2016 election. In the 2016 election, Hillary won the popular vote. However, due to the Electoral College, Trump got more electors. Could Hillary still have became president? The answer is yes. You see, electors technically don't have to vote for the candidate that won in their state and can vote for who they want to win. Have electors done this before? Yes. Has this ever affected the final outcome of the election? Not yet. So there you have it. The Electoral College is a complex enigma as old as the Constitution itself. Many people I spoke with wondered why we had such a confusing system in place and why we didn't just use a simple popular vote. Both systems have their own positives and negatives. As I was making this video, I wanted to include more information about the types of electors and the way the electors are split up and more details on the election process itself, but I figured that would be too much information for one video, so we can talk about it at a later time. Thank you to my sisters Ananya and Kavya for recommending the video software I used. Thank you to my friends Stages Fusion and Rishma for all their help and support. Random shout out to my friends Tai Latte and Hunter Owl for, well, they asked for it. Also. Thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. By the way, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video.